Welcome back to another Acting Analysis and Tips for Animators, and today I'm going to take a look at the creepy movie Sinister. Today's clip is on the shorter side. There are three sequences, moments I want to take a look at, but before I do, hi, my name is JD and I do acting analysis clips like these. I do animation analysis clips, I do rig reviews, product reviews, animation news, all kinds of things. You know how this goes. This is YouTube. This is the pitch. Like and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, hit that bell button so you don't miss any of those uploads. And that is the pitch because I do upload a lot. Don't want to miss it. Subscribe. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. That's it for the pitch. Thanks for listening to that. I'm going to go straight to the sequences now. First up, we have this here where I love already with that post. Basically, this is all about posturing and then expectations and then a reaction to that. So basically, as he comes in, we see this. The crossed arms, you go, this guy is not in a good mood. Not sure what he's going to do. Is he going to say hi or not? And then Ethan Hawke comes in here and says, hey. And you can see this very clear, clearly silhouetted. I want to say hi. And his response is basically, hmm, pushing the lips together, jaw up. Mm, yeah, I'm not going to say hi. But also, the reason why I'm showing this is his reaction. Watch the hands. Eh. And then that's it. So if you have two characters and they interact, it's not just about the posing, the posture, and how do they stand or sit. There's a sitting sequence after that. But it's also, if a character does something, there's an expectation that, well, you're going to shake hands as well. And now that he's not doing this, you're wondering, oh, is he going to be upset about this? Is he going to laugh? And I think that is the most interesting part. It's actually this. Just that moment of, eh, I guess not. And you can see he has a bit of a chuckle because this is not the first time that he's dealing with the police. So if you do anything where, whatever, it could be handshake, it could be whatever a character does to another character that you as an audience think, well, this is going to trigger this reaction for this character and it's not happening, then it will be interesting to see, well, how does this character now react? And I like that little, eh, I guess not. Those are the little things to me that are more personality driven, character driven than just here is a, you know, IK or, the, or FK arm that moves out for handshake. This is the good stuff. This is the moment that tells me more about this character. Next up we have this one's a bit dark. This whole movie has very distinct lighting and darkness and shadows. But anyway, she wandered into the laundry room. She needs to go to the bathroom. She's sleepwalking. She goes, oh, I can't find the bathroom. And what I want to show you is the moment after that. So she's in the bathroom. Dad is waiting. She is done, opens the door, and still completely, you know, not sleepwalking, but very sleepy, and walks out, and then this happens. Oh, nope, this way. I thought it was really cute. And to me, this is, you know, he is familiar with her. She's done that before. He knows where the things are. It's basically, it's a character that's an environment that is familiar. And if you're watching my clips, I'm a big fan of making a distinction if a character is somewhere there for the first time or not. Are you familiar with the place or not? And how are you going to act and react to things because you're there for the first time or not? And this whole thing of, well, it's my daughter. I know I can turn it this way. She, her room is this way. It's just, it's a certain, almost a routine or just a familiarity. There's just something really cute about that moment. So again, if you have multiple characters, like before when they say hi or, you know, a handshake, or not you can bring in certain elements like that where it's they do things to help or without looking or they say things without looking or they hand things over there's anything where you can tell those two have a relationship there's something more going on this could be a family thing this could be more intimate thing whatever you want to do but it gives us an extra layer to the character's performances so it's not just like i said before an ikr or an fkr moving and doing a movement it's all about personality and just getting a bit more a better insight into the characters and speaking of characters i like this here. In this, uh, the sound is not on here, but it says, hey, to him, we're friends, right? We we, we can talk to each other. And it, again, this is the movie has very distinct, you know, darkness and shadow and light. It's a very interesting movie, the way it was shot. But you can still kind of see what he's doing here, right? So he's sitting here. They're, he is not very comfortable. You can see this. He holds the cup. He's slightly hunched over, not really making eye contact. And then he goes back, puts his arm out and opens up his chest Say, hey, all right, we're, we're friends here. But you still see that he has his legs crossed. And that's what I want to show you. And this continues on. Even when he goes forward, like, oh, come on. Yeah, we can do this, right? He still goes back and crosses the leg again. It would be different if his legs would be here. And he's completely open, chest towards him, face towards him. Everything is open and not closed off because he's actually generally wanting to be a friend. This is a bit of a... I'm saying I want to be the friend, but the subtext and kind of the body post-betrayal is that I'm still crossed over. It's not really like half of me wants to be it, 
but the other half doesn't want to be it. And this continues on with the sequence as he stays in that pose, as he stays in that pose, and you can see just in his whole demeanor and the face that he's just not super comfortable and not as relaxed or pretending to be as relaxed as he is. And this goes all the way back to posing. As you start a shot, don't just take your characters in a T pose and bring those arms down and then animate. Think about what is their character pose? How do they feel? How do they feel towards another character if you have multiple characters in the scene? And then flesh out that pose. And then you have somewhere to go. Is it always hunched over, back, pretending to be relaxed? There's so many things you can do with your shoulder pose, with a head tilt. So think about that as you construct your scene one or two characters how do they sit closely or not do they sit open to each other or not are they faced away from each other or not there's so much you can do and this is why i like analyzing those scenes because they give me ideas for potential new shots that i'm going to do now speaking of new shots if you have new shots or old shots that you want to show me and you want me to help you with that you know this is, this is the end this is the picture of it i have workshops so you can sign up at any time link in the description with all the information signups are always open and i can help you with your shots just let me know email me or comment whatever you want to do if you want to sign up up for those and even though this was a shorter clip if you're still watching this as always thank you for your patience i appreciate the time that you put in for watching this until the very end and if you don't want to miss any of these of course again the pitch subscribe and hit that bell button so you get all the notifications for all of those uploads because i do upload a lot except kind of weekends but that is that i say thank you and i'll see you in my next clip